That was quite a film. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. That's even more exciting. So I think this is the perfect film to talk about filmmaking. And most of the people here are not filmmakers. And I, there's always this mystery about how a film is made. And people you know, always wonder, wow, you shot that much footage and you got it down to that little. So let's start with you're one of four producers listed. Uh, yeah, that is correct. I would say I was the most hands-on, but everybody was involved. It was a big production. And why are there four producers? Um, different producers that, you know, are parts of different aspects of the film. Some help more in pre-production, some help line up uh, funding or executive producers, some are more involved in the day-to-day, -day, the logistics and the creative. So we all have different roles. How many cameras? We had six cameras. Six cameras shooting rehearsals as well as finished. performances. One was constantly always on Tyler, and the rest were wandering around depending on which piece we were working on at that moment, who we wanted to film, and so on. I saw one camera one time. So you are rehearsing in a mirrored room, and you have six cameras that somehow have to be invisible. That's this is true. Were there, were there lots of shots where we went, oh gosh, we can't use this? Yeah, shot. we were all in half the shots. There's no way around it when there's mirrors around. And it's six around. cameras and assistants and producers. Of course. And, and all of that. Um, the choreography, the, the, the shooting of it, it's all beautiful close ups, it's all very tight, there's lots of movement. Um, is Stephen directing all the time? Is he looking? at a monitor? Is he seeing what's happening? Are his six camera people all sort of on their own? You take this side, you take this side, you have the wide shot. Can you talk about that? Sure, yeah. Um, before we even start for the day, Stephen will definitely decide you know, where people should be before we even begin. So always someone with Tyler and then always someone with some of the um, pieces that we were working on. Um, but there's always a video village or a monitor hub set up where we can all watch all the cameras at the same time so we can see who, where, where people are, where rehearsals are, where things are going on, and so on. Um, so yes, it was very hard. There's a lot of you know, cuts and so on, so you can't see us in the background, or we'd all be right outside, or, or whatever it was, just to not be in the shot. How much footage was shot? <sighs> That's a good question. We didn't do a ton more than a week, but we shot six cameras for a week pretty much straight. Um, hours and hours and hours. Probably 100 hours easy. At least. Easy. I think one of the coolest facts to learn actually is um, for about an hour worth of footage you shoot that ends up only being about one minute of actual content you see in the film. Yeah, people don't get that either. And then you have to figure it out and organize it and cut it down. Um, do you remember how long one of the first decent rough cuts was? They're uh, probably around an hour, I would say. Um, so you got it down pretty fast. Yeah, I would say we got it down pretty fast. It was all about the arrangement, I would say, of how we wanted to order everything, which piece we should start with. Could you follow this storyline? Can you follow another story? Um, so just ordering was very important. Right, which is incredibly difficult in a film. You can have all the order you want, and it's just not coming together, and you move this to there, and all of a sudden, it's working. Exactly. It was literally one flip of a scene and all of a sudden the movie came together. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, let's open up to some questions. Do we have questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Um, how much of the action was done with the film versus let them do what they do and then the six cameras? Are... Did you hear that up there? No. Yeah. How much action was, was allowed to happen with the film, or was there choreography? Was that your...? Well, it seemed like they were doing what they wanted to do. They were rehearsing. They weren't that aware of the camera. So therefore, it seems like the cameras were just set up and captured what was going on, rather than performance for the film. Right. Was it true cinema verite? Did you just, yeah. were you just flies on the wall? A lot of it was. Yes, of course, there were sit-down interviews where you saw people speak to camera, and there was, of course, the director asking questions. But most of the time, with this kind of 
production going on where Tyler has to put together an event in less than a week. Um, we just followed. You know, we were more, I guess I'd say, flies on the wall, but you know, of course there was direction here and there, but yeah, we just, you couldn't get involved. We couldn't even put mics on them because of their moves and, and you know, partnering and so on. So everything was boomed, which was also very Which we also part. didn't see in the mirrors. Yes. And the boom, if you don't know, is that was your job, right? Keep them out. Gotta make sure, <laughs> always. <laughs> that the microphone's on the end of what could be easily be a 15-foot pole. And the, are there any sound guys in here, women? Uh-oh, I started out as a sound person. We're always in the way. We're always the last people, you know, get out of the way, sound man. Always waiting on audio. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question over here, yes. Yeah, I'm curious how you got involved in this project, how you got invited in. Did you get how did the project take root? So the director that um, directed this film, Stephen Cantor, I've worked with him on and off for a decade. Um, we've done multiple projects together, traveled to 30 countries around the world together. And his daughter is actually very active um, when it comes to the New York City Ballet, um, rehearsing there and so on. And so this has been part of his life growing up with his daughter who's been in the Nutcracker now and some other big performances. So um, it's good role models for her and it actually was a great way to get to know this you know, small niche of an art form that isn't so popularized and modernize it with women like Tyler who's bring in you know, hip hoppers and tap dancers and so on, just to make it more unique for this younger generation. So that's what I'd say about that. Question over, yeah, Lana. How closely did the director work with the editor? Very close. Myself, Steven, and the editor, um, months in the editing room. Months and months and months. We'd have to step away and we'd come back and we'd you know, go, go through also a ton of amazing footage of Tyler as growing up as a little girl, how to pick that out. Um, but yeah, very, very hands on together in the edit. I saw what looked like one um, piece that didn't make it in the final film. Was there just, was there one? Regards to? There were uh, sailors. Ah, I see. So what you didn't see is um, Tyler put on three different nights of performances at the Music Center in Los Angeles. So her goal was to actually have different pieces every night so that if you came every night, you'd see a completely different show. Whoa. And throughout it, she danced in, as you could see, over nine pieces throughout three nights, as well as put together the dancers and the choreography and the everything. Um, so you only saw a portion of a few that we followed because we couldn't follow every one and there's also certain permissions and guidelines around filming certain um, composers or musicians. So we filmed some of the ones that we thought would be most interesting, most diverse, to show an appreciation for the art in different ways, I would say. So you decided in advance. Correct. These are the ones we're going to follow, and these are the ones we're not going to follow. Correct, but while we were there, you know, Tyler would be like, oh, you've got to get this piece as well, so let's film this. So we'd worry about rights and permissions later, and we filmed what we could then, and then put together yeah. everything. Great. Another question? Yes. a really good question. I mean, she did a phenomenal job directing. Um, could be a possibility. Let's let's call. Let's let's <laughs> let's ask her. Um, what is the life of, of this film? Where will it be shown that the wider public can see it? When what 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 is going to be happening with it? Yeah, um, it's been at a few film festivals, but it's also on Hulu right now, so you can watch it and live stream it and see it in any home, which is kind of great as well. Great, excellent. One more question, way up there. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. Richard Thank Rogers. you. It's nice that everyone was able to enjoy this. You know, it wasn't just a film about ballet, so you didn't have to just appreciate that art form. You could appreciate it as anyone going through some sort of crazy, you know, big event in their life that they're preparing for, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much and thank you thank all for you, coming. Robert.